join in the singing of O Canada. <laughs>
if I could just say a couple of words. Um, I just started to sit on the Shaw Woods uh, um, uh, board, and they are an amazing bunch of volunteers. Um, I want to thank Lacey and all her volunteers for the Denim Days because this money will go to good use. So on behalf of the board, thank you very much. And as I said, it's a wonderful place. Please go and visit. And uh, they are truly, truly a bunch of dedicated men and women that offer a lot of energy and time to the project and make it wonderful in North Ogona Wilberforce. It's absolutely beautiful. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ward Nemo. Good morning, uh, members of council. We have with us this morning uh, Ms. Catherine Moore from the uh, Ministry of Transportation. Catherine is the regional director for Eastern Region. Uh, she is based out of the Kingston office of the MTO. Uh, she's no stranger to these chambers. In fact, she was here about uh, two weeks ago uh, to meet with the Ad Hoc uh, Committee for Highway 417 and provide some uh, input to that group. Uh, she brings with her a number of staff, and I'll let her introduce her staff as, the, as she sees fit. Um, they are going to talk about winter operations and maintenance uh, of the highways through the county, as well as provide an update on the capital undertakings that, are, uh, that have happened over the last year or so, and are planned for the, uh, uh, the coming year. So, Ms. Moore, welcome once again, and uh, we'll look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Warden. Members of Council, uh, it's indeed a uh, pleasure to be here again in uh, beautiful Renfrew County. Uh, an opportunity for uh, me and my staff to uh, have a chance to speak with you about some of our works and for uh, you to put some uh, uh, faces to the names of our staff and uh, we in turn to get to know you as councillors uh, a little bit better. There's certainly some faces in the room today that uh, I will have an opportunity to meet for the first time, which is fabulous. Uh, with me uh, today, I've brought uh, several staff uh, and maybe I'll just ask them to wave and stand up as I introduce them so you can see who they are. Uh, the first is Darren Waters. Darren is a senior project engineer in our uh, planning and design section. Darren will actually come up and speak about our capital program in a few minutes. Uh, with him is, uh, oh, maybe also to add, Darren uh, chairs uh, the, uh, I think, very positive collaborative effort we have with uh, Renfrew County and the Ontario Provincial Police that we call Team Highway 17. And he'll report a little bit on some of those activities as well. Uh, we have David Kerr, who is our regional maintenance engineer. Uh, David will uh, come and speak to uh, winter maintenance operations. David is responsible for our overall winter maintenance uh, and overall maintenance programs in all of eastern Ontario. Uh, joining as well today uh, is Jim McLaurin. Uh, Jim is a maintenance superintendent out of our Ottawa office and responsible for our overall uh, maintenance operations through the Highway 17 corridor. Beside him is John Potts, our maintenance superintendent from our Bancroft office. Uh, out of the Bancroft office, uh, responsibilities uh, for maintenance uh, that John overlooks are for most of the rest of Renfrew County outside of the 17 corridor. Uh, and Bill Herrett, who is our traffic uh, supervisor, uh, also a member of Team Highway 17. And also very pleased to have here with us this morning uh, Wayne Hassler. Wayne is the uh, maintenance uh, operations manager for high road maintenance uh, for uh, works uh, through the Highway 17 corridor. And I know that uh, for uh, those of you who have uh, uh, 17 running through your, uh, your townships, I'm uh, pretty sure a lot of your staff on the maintenance side uh, know Wayne pretty well. So pleased to have Wayne here today. And at this point, I'll invite uh, David Kerr to come up and uh, speak first about our winter maintenance operations. Good morning and, and thank you for having me here. So as Cassie, Kathy said, I'm the Regional Maintenance Engineer for, for the Eastern Ontario, the Ministry of Transportation. And I'm going to give you a little introduction of uh, sort of what the winter maintenance areas are in Eastern Region, give you an idea of what our standards and practices are, uh, some changes that we've made uh, provincially but also focus sometimes uh, as well what has changed in the county of Renfrew over the years. Um, give you uh, some contacts and information that you can need and I'm also open to any questions at, at that time too. 
So, what does Eastern Ontario look like for the area maintenance contractors? So, in Eastern Ontario, we have four area maintenance contracts, uh, as, as outlined in the, the various color coding. Um, the two that are going to focus in your area, uh, in the County of Renfrew, are um, High Roads Maintenance does the Ottawa area, and Carilion Canada Incorporated does the, um, the Bancroft area. And this sort of gives you a little bit of an example of what, uh, what the highways in the County of Renfrew are under, under the Ministry of Transportation. So, uh, maintenance standards. So, Ontario's snow and ice control standards are among the highest in Ontario, or in North America. And in, in Ontario, we have five winter classes. Uh, they're based on the winter traffic volumes. And as you see ahead of you, class one is for winter vehicle traffic above 10,000. Class two is between two and 10,000. And then three, four, and five uh, as well follow down there. Um, within the county of Renfrew, class one and two would be applicable. Um, three is in some areas of each Ontario, and then four and five are not applicable in eastern Ontario. So what does uh, those classes turn into? So for a class um, of highway of class one, we have a bare pavement standard that the pavement must be cleared within eight hours from the end of the winter storm event. We also have a requirement in our contracts that they must complete a circuit, plowing, salting, within 1.6 hours for that class. And the various class, class two is 16 hours bare payment and 2.2 circuit time. Other requirements within our contract are as follows. So our contractors uh, are responsible for having staff at ready, equipment ready, and material ready in supply. They deploy plows upon accumulation of two centimeters of snow and they start spreading salt or sand within 30 minutes of the start of a storm. They have those circuit times, as I mentioned before, for plowing and salting. And they also have requirements to apply a certain amount of sand or salt, depending on the conditions. They, they continue those applications of salting and plowing continuously throughout the storm until they achieve the bare pavement standard. And they're also responsible for addressing isolated slippery sections as they occur. Uh, once the storm has ended, they have post-storm cleanup where they clear up the shoulders, median crossovers, commuter parking lots, and a variety of things. Um, another co key component that our EMC contractors are responsible for is for patrolling the roads and calling out staff and directing their operations. So within our contracts, we have what we call uh, transition periods. Um, our winter uh, is defined within our contracts for both Ottawa and the Bancroft contracts of between November 1st and April 1st. So that's our winter season. But the transition periods is 30 days before that and 30 days after that period of time. Um, and that's where our contractor is phasing in his equipment uh, within those first 30 days. And he has to have at least 50% of the equipment available for storm events. So moving to some technology that we use, all the winter equipment that our contractors have, have AVL on them, and essentially that's, we call, AVL is automatic vehicle located, and it's, used, it's typically, it's just a GPS uh, type technology. It allows us to track where the plows are, and the salt trucks are, and the patrol trucks. It's capable of tracking the equipment and storing it for later retrieval. And it allows us to real-time monitor, but also go back and replay storms to see how the equipment has moved around. It provides us details of where it's been, the speed it was traveled, what it applied, um, and uh, the application for you. And again, it's, it's there for later retrieval if we have to go back and look at a storm event or some circumstance. This is just a screen capture, and it may be hard to see depending on where you are, but this is uh, the, uh, a screen capture from a computer screen. The little red dots uh, down sort of here, here, and here, here, that's the plow equipment that's out there. 
So uh, when we turn on the system and, we and load it up, this is what we get to see. This gives us the details of where it's at, what the temperature of the road is, is it salting, is it spreading, is it plowing. Some further technology we use is uh, road weather and information systems, ARWIS as we uh, typically use the acronym as. And it's an integrated system within the province of road and weather conditions. We have uh, currently over 140 sta stations within the province of Ontario. Within the Renfrew County, we have three stations, one at Bissett Creek, one at Petawawa, and one at Renfrew. And I understand you that there's a couple municipal ones in the area uh, that uh, we're certainly in conversations with Steve about uh, sharing that information back and forth so that we both can uh, benefit from that. Um, what we use that for is to predict weather. So it gives a, uh, a detailed forecast of the weather, as well as it gives us what the road condition of the a predicted road condition, and it gives us a long range forecast as well. That's the current technology we've been using. This is a new, tech, new uh, product that we've been offering to the public just on a trial basis. Um, it's called Track My Plow. And originally it started in the Owen Sound Simcoe area, and it's now expanded into the Bancroft contract, uh, the Kingston West contract, and the Hamilton, Huntsville contract areas. And what it is is the public can go on at any time and follow plow equipment around to see has it cleared the highway. Um, it also gives you, uh, on the right side of the screen, it gives you Environment Canada weather alerts so that they can see if there's any weather alerts within that area and then also Twitter alerts, uh, any Twitter feeds from the OPP or the MTO. So it's, it's a technology we've, we're trying this year and uh, so far it's been uh, very positive uh, in its results. So a little uh, blow up, of the, I'll give you a little explanation of this little blow up here. So up here in the top corner you have this little truck with a V looking plow on it. So that's where the current position of the truck was. And then you'll see arrows following its position of where it started and where it's continuing to go to, so, or where it's been. Other products we use uh, in our winter maintenance is DLA or direct liquid application. It's an anti-icing liquid that's put uh, down prior to freezing rain or snow events and helps prevent snow and ice performing and sticking to the roadway. It remains on the surface uh, to help melt that snow in the first part of the storm. And it's used primarily in the southern areas. It is a temperature dependent element, uh, but uh, it is used on Highway 17 in this area. So. This is a new piece of equipment that uh, we've seen more and more over the past years, and, and including in the Renfrew area. Uh, it's a, this unit here being a tow plow. The lead unit pulls it and deploys it. At times it's stowed right in behind the vehicle, and then uh, it will deploy out and plow the adjacent lane, plow the adjacent shoulder, or passing lane in circumstances. So looking back, uh, sort of a few years back in 2013-14, <clears throat> we started making improvements, uh, re continuing to review our contracts, but also looking at where we can make improvements. So in 13-14, we added 55 additional units uh, to clear passing lanes and truck climbing lanes within the province of Ontario. Most of it was in northern Ontario, uh, but it did add one piece of equipment in, on Highway 60 to clear passing lanes. We launched our Twitter accounts, and at that time it was a MTO province-wide Twitter account. And we changed our, our organization. Uh, we now have a director of maintenance, and five of my or four of my counterparts as regional maintenance engineer in each of the regions. Going forward, last winter we added a 50 additional units in southern Ontario, and that was primarily focused at freeway ramps and shoulders, uh, but it did add additional equipment uh, on the east end of, of Renfrew County on the 17417 area, which had an improvement area, improved there. We've added uh, additional staff in each of our contract areas, 
so to improve our oversight. So in each, in, in the Bancroft area and in the Ottawa area contracts, we've added one, one new staff member to improve our oversight of the contractor. We've added RWIS cameras uh, to the, uh, the stations throughout the province. We've also initiated an enhanced visibility program so that our, pro that our equipment is more visible to the public uh, during storm events and uh, some of the equipment in this area does have that equipment, uh, the visibility package on it. And we've also started a winter maintenance, a renewed a winter maintenance campaign, uh, trying to educate drivers, influence their behavior, and understand the expectations that they can see through the winter. We've, uh, in our on-route stations on 401, we've, uh, we have Tim's TV where we're providing information to the public when they stop there as well. So, from last winter to now is the next few slides. So, one, so, the ministry and, the contra and our contractors mutually agreed to end contracts servicing four areas. The first area was in the Kenora area. It's been successfully retendered. It's a performance-based contract maintenance contract uh, and the new service provider is MCON. Subsequent to that, the Sudbury contract area, Niagara Hamilton, and in this area, the Ottawa contract is being retendered. The other element, one of the other big elements is the Auditor General replaced, released a special uh, report on winter maintenance in April of this past year. So, what does the ending of the Ottawa AMC contract mean in the County of Renfrew? So it's a mutual decision that the Ministry and High Roads Maintenance uh, came to agreement to end the contract in the area. It was, it was, in our view, best for the province, the traveling public, and of course for HRM. HRM is going to continue providing the services within the Ottawa area contract up until September 15th of this year. On September 16th, the new contract will start, so there won't be any inter interruption of service. What the new contract allows us to do is uh, introduce more prescriptive approaches on how the equipment is calculated and provided. It provides a different, or different material risk sharing for the contractor and ourselves. It goes back to requiring the use of DALA. It also identifies minimum road patrolling frequencies and locations. It requires the contractor to ensure that his equipment is ready and that his operators, that he has sufficient operators. And it introduces uh, best value procurement where his proposal is evaluated and scored and evaluated against the price that he submitted to do the contract. Take a break here for a sec. So the other key element, as I mentioned before, is that the Auditor General issued the special report. And there were eight main recommendations out of that. One being the encourage the proactive use of winter materials, having sufficient winter equipment in good working order, awareness and accuracy of road reporting and winter conditions improve the reliability of our Ontario 511 website, introducing best value procurement for our maintenance contracts, improving and more consistent oversight of our contractors, accurate and meaningful reporting of our bare payments standard, and monitor, continuing to monitor and assess and take remedial actions as we saw necessary. So of those eight key recommendations, the Ministry of Transportation uh, in, introduced an action plan in June of last year. It identified the actions that we've already taken from, uh, we had previously done an internal review, so we'd, we'd already identified a number of areas that we, we wanted to make improvements, so we already had taken action. We'd also identified actions that we were going to plan for this winter, and then also actions that we would continue to work on to make improvements. 
And the other key element is that the minister has asked the Auditor General to come back after this winter and check to see how we're doing. So what changes in the uh, Renfrew County this year? So we continue to have ongoing conversations with our contractors, uh, including uh, to look at areas of improvement, but also looking to educate the public, educate our drivers. Um, our contractors have their contract requirements and the ministry uh, performs oversight on those. But we also see that driver behavior and their expectations, we need to make sure that they drive according to the conditions and they understand what their expectations are when driving in the winter. We continue to have those conversations with the OPP uh, to to understand those circumstances during winter and any concerns to bring forward. We, within the Renfrew County, we've also in the process of installing three PVMS signs, which will help alert drivers of changing conditions, as well as provide messaging. Our ROS cameras, those road and weather information systems that we have out there that we installed cameras on the previous winter, we've made them publicly available. So you can go onto our Ontario 511 website and take a look at camera of live images or they're time delayed but uh, every 20 minutes I believe they take pictures so that you can see actual road conditions uh, before you take your drive. We've also broken up our provincial Twitter accounts and made them regionalized. So there's a regional Twitter account for Eastern Ontario. There's one for the, the four remaining regions as well. We've expanded our patroller training for our contractors. We've also introduced a winter readiness and, and performance incentive to make sure his equipment is ready and that a sufficient operator is available. We're increasing the use of DLA through a cost sharing uh, program with them. And we continue to talk with our contractors to make improvements. So, this is the sort of the contact information. Uh, the top box is, is our, our traffic operations center, which is centered in Ottawa. Uh, the contact information for concerns and public complaints. We also have the winter road conditions, which are on our Tyreo 511 site. The regional Twitter accounts are there as well. We've uh, introduced a winter highways email address so that people can email issues or concerns. And then the driving tips are also available for the public. So that's the end of my presentation on winter maintenance. There, in the presentation material, I also provided some, uh, some historical information from, I think we were here last October, um, that's there for as well. It showed sort of traffic volumes within Renfrew County, showed you what the patrol route, or the plow routes and salting routes are as well. So. So at this time, I'm open to questions. Thank you, uh, Mayor, or sorry, uh, Councillor Murphy, and then Councillor Vizneski, more please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you, that was a great presentation. Um, the Track Your Plow, is there an app for that? Is there an app for that? No, it's, uh, it's available on a mobile device. It's not, it doesn't work perfectly on a mobile device. It works better on a desktop or a laptop, so. Just it wasn't in your resource, and, and I think that that's, um, that's a tool that can be very useful uh, for our more rural residents that are, you know, they're wondering when the next plow is coming about. So, uh, an excellent way to use uh, social media and, and computers in general. Councillor, I have two questions, but um, uh, Councillor Murphy asked one of them. I think that track my plow. That's a wonderful tool, and uh, we often get calls about the. Uh, ministry of highways which is in our jurisdiction and, and uh, people are upset or anything and this is absolutely a wonderful way for them to get their answers you know uh, very quickly so the other question I had Mr. Warden is could we get a copy of that I was trying to write a lot of it down um, but it's such good information because I would like to provide that to my council uh, again all of us are it's wonderful to have that kind of at our fingertips so if calls come through you know we have a better understanding we can give direction. So, uh, again, well done. I, I uh, Kathy, it's, it's well, well done. So we, we will send out a, uh, an email to you with, with information. Yeah, certainly, yeah, that's, that's fine. And uh, uh, I 
think I've left my contact information, but if there's any questions like that, I'm certainly open to those. Thank you very much. Councillor Donahue and then, uh, then Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and thank you, uh, Mr. Carr. Uh, my question is with regards to uh, there were several contracts been zeroing in on Ottawa. So the contract was terminated on mutual agreements. So I'm presuming from that that it, had, it was not coming to its, its contractual end. And, if, and in the new model that is performance based, what was the previous uh, contract based on? So, so both, both contracts were performance based. Um, with the new performance-based contract that we're going forward with, we've, we've taken elements from the old and introduced newer elements that we've learned from our experiences that we need to be more prescriptive of how our contractors evaluate how many pieces of equipment. We need to make it DLA, the direct liquid application. We see the benefits to the, to the road and the traveling public for using that product. So we were introducing that you must use it as opposed to making it an optional situation. So a variety of things along those lines. So. Uh, Councillor Gibson and then Councillor Staff, please. Uh, thank you, Warden. In your public education campaign, uh, are you taking any initiatives to educate the public that at certain times you simply don't have the equipment, even though you're trying to meet your standards, the storm is so severe that those standards uh, cannot be met? In, yes, in, in most circumstances, the contractor works in a continuous operation to meet those standards, but there are unique circumstances, unique weather patterns that, that he, he, he just can't. And yes, you, you do have to educate uh, as part of the education is that really drive according to the conditions, recognizing that when it's snowing out there, you're not going to have bare pavement out there. You need to adjust your driving conditions and your speed so that you can accommodate this. Councillor Stack and then Sweet, please. <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, appreciate Dennis asking. I just want to ask for a copy of the information as well to share. Tell the Red Paris, obviously, post Ottawa. It's for clarification of the contracts. They're being mutually discontinued so does that mean they're being restructured and, and, and these changes put in them and then continue to whatever term of the agreement was there or are they actually going to retender and it wasn't really clear what well, that direction was sorry but yeah so the the existing contract will end on september 15th and currently uh, we were advertising a new contract that will start on september 16th with the whoever the successful proponent is Councillor Sweet, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I you mentioned that uh, 511 uh, Ontario with cameras is not open to the public, and I just went online, and everyone was absolutely impressed that I went online with the computer to find out the information. You're not impressed, all okay. right. Anyway, just, I'm just looking right now, and, and it really is clear here, uh, and I think this is marvelous as an individual who travels back and forth to Ottawa on a regular basis and currently looking at the uh, road conditions on Highway 17 and the Bonnachar River Bridge and it's updated as you see every 20 minutes. I took a look at Petawawa, look at Ardenbrier. Uh, I get a real, real nice idea and understanding uh, of uh, what the road conditions are on that highway but it also indicates 401, Highway uh, 41, etc., etc., wherever the cameras are. So. I think it's a marvelous tool for those who are traveling and it should be really, really promoting uh, so that those of us who are, have limited uh, internet experience can still get on there and see what the road conditions are. So I think it's a marvelous jump forward to, uh, for safety for people who are traveling on a regular basis. Good job. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kirk. I think we're going to let you off the grid. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> So good morning, Warden. Um, I'm pleased to be back here again uh, this year. Um, enjoy my annual trip up here to provide an update on what the ministry is uh, planning or has done in the past year up in Renfrew County as far as capital works and uh, planning for the next few years. Uh, just a reminder, my name's Darren Waters. I'm Senior Project Engineer in the Planning and Design section. 
So the things I would like to talk about this morning are obviously give you an update on where we're at with the expansion of Highway 17. And then as I mentioned, uh, looking at uh, rehabilitation projects uh, that, are, that were completed in 2015 on Renfrew County Provincial Highways and also projects that we're looking at in the future on uh, both 17 and the other Renfrew County Provincial Highways. A quick update on where we're at with the uh, planning and uh, the preliminary design study on Highway 148, which uh, just outside Pembroke running to Quebec. An update on what uh, Team Highway 17's been up to since I last saw you last year, and our next steps. So starting with the expansion, I know I've shown this slide before, but just an update on the different phases of the expansion of Highway 17 from Arn prior to Renfrew. We have a preliminary design that was completed in 2004 for that stretch, um, which runs, uh, the western limit is three kilometers west of Bruce Street. And as you are all aware, we're underway with construction on phase two right now, which is uh, Division Street to uh, Shield Drive. And that work is, uh, is underway and is expected to be completed in the fall of this year. Phase three and four, um, two long stretches from Shield Drive to three kilometers west of Bruce Street. Uh, we continue there um, under property acquisition and I'll have a few more details in the presentation further on. So phase two, what were we up to this year on phase two? Uh, we continued through construction this year. Uh, you're probably all aware of the bridge that's been built at Campbell Drive. The interchange has been constructed and most of, the, uh, most of the future westbound lanes have been built from Campbell Drive to Shield Drive. There is a bridge which carries future westbound lanes over Shield Drive, which uh, neared completion this year. Um, it uh, just requires final concrete pours and waterproofing and paving, so uh, that's waiting for the spring for that work to be done. And the contractor came in this year and also built a median detour at the bridges at Shield Drive to keep the highway open next year um, so that the construction of the eastbound lane bridge can start first thing next year, or this year, I guess, in 2016. So the work that's planned to occur first thing in 2016, obviously, as I said, starting the work on the Shield Drive eastbound lane bridge. Once the westbound lane bridge at Shield Drive is completed, we will open the future westbound lanes and that will mean that the interchange will open at Campbell Drive. And so there will be a separation of traffic early in the construction season. The, uh, the westbound lanes will go on the new lanes and the eastbound lanes will continue on existing Highway 17. And we will start then uh, work on culvert replacements along that future eastbound lanes and rehabilitation of that pavement and that work is expected to be completed at the end of the year. Phase three and four, uh, so from Shield Drive to three kilometers west of Bruce Street, uh, we continue with uh, property acquisition in that uh, stage. Uh, we uh, continue to negotiate with, with willing sellers out there. We have more than 80 owners that we're dealing with, and uh, the property acquisition, as I've said before, is mostly at the interchange locations and some locations along the, uh, the right-of-way itself where we had to widen for the uh, update to the design that was completed in 2004. Over 90% of the property owners we're dealing with out there have offers and uh, we have completed some of the acquisitions out there. Other activities you may have seen out there, we've uh, undertaken the engineering survey to support the future detailed design. And uh, I just want to reiterate, as I'm sure you're all aware, phases three and four are currently not funded. So uh, we continue to wait for that before we can move on any further. What we do plan to start though this year is we do have um, the Trans-Canada pipeline which crosses the right of way around Goshen Road. Uh, we plan to start negotiations with Trans-Canada this year um, to undertake whatever strengthening or relocation of that pipeline will be required to build the expansion over the pipeline. And we anticipate that will take a number of years to complete, so we want to get that started uh, as soon as we can. So that was it for the expansion of 17. Um, what I wanted to do now is run through the work that we did undertake on our normal uh, rehabilitation program in uh, Renfrew County. 
I've broken it down as I did in previous years because we tend to have more work on 17 than the other highways. So broken it down into slides on 17 and then on the other highways. We did invest over $30 million on improvements in Renfrew County highways this year. That includes the investment on Highway 17 expansion. But also we rehabilitated a number of bridges, replaced culverts, and undertook pavement resurfacing. So focusing on Highway 17 first, um, one of the projects we continued to work on, it had been ongoing for a number of years, and uh, we'll have some work again in the spring of 2016 as the work just outside of Pembroke here, where we had resurfacing from County Road 26 to County Road 24, included work at the Indian River, Muskrat River, and the CNR bridges. Uh, the work that's still yet to be completed on that is just some, uh, some work at those bridges in the spring. Um, in that work, we included centerline rumble strips, so that was generally implemented last year. We undertook resurfacing in the town of Deep River this year from Ridge Road to Deep River Road. And that work included um, some minor widening at the Ridge Road area to include um, a continuous left turn lane from Ridge Road to Deep River Road uh, to service all the businesses on the south side of the highway through that area. And it included some minor modifications at the intersection to support um, changes in the lane drop to accommodate that left turn lane throughout. And that work was completed in the fall. We also included some selective resurfacing on Highway 17, just some holding strategies to maintain the pavement condition in the Renfrew area. And that also included, at the request of uh, the town of Renfrew, some resurfacing at the traffic islands at Gillen Road, O'Brien Road, and Bruce Street. And we did carry over this year, although there wasn't any major uh, impacts to traffic this year, we did have work ongoing at our Petawawa River Bridge deck replacement project where we had to get in there and undertake uh, removal of some of the works that uh, were put in place for the temporary modular bridge after the fisheries timing window allowed us to get in there and do that. On the other highways, the other provincial highways in Renfrew County, we had work on highways 41 and 60 this year. We undertook uh, culvert placements. That was a carryover job from uh, 2014 on Highway 41, a uh, lengthy stretch from County, uh, Highway 60 all the way up to Highway 17. And that uh, resurfaced that pavement, which was in need of repair. On Highway 60, we undertook uh, paving and uh, rehabilitation of culverts as well from Wilno to Killaloo. And that included a repair to a structural culvert around the County Road 512 area. So future projects on Highway 17. So the projects listed on here are, are planned over the next five years, so they're not in any particular order. Um, some of them will happen sooner than others. Um, one of them being resurfacing from the Petawawa Laurentian Hills boundary into the urban limits of Shock River. That stretch, when it does come up for construction, will include centerline rumble strips, um, which was a Team Highway 17 initiative. Out for tender now and will happen in 2016 is resurfacing of the stretch from County Road 26 to the Petawawa Laurentian Hills boundary. And again, that will include centerline rumble strips um, in that work. We have a number of structural culverts that will be replaced at a number of different locations on 17 over the next five years. And you will see us out there at a number of locations undertaking centerline culvert replacements um, just on an ongoing need as required for poor culverts. For the rest of the highways, we have work planned on highways 28, 41, 60, 132, and 148. On Highway 28, we have a design build contract, which is just under award now, and it stretches from the town of Bancroft all the way through to Renfrew Road 514, so the easterly end of that contract is in the county. Uh, expect work out there between now and the end of 2018. It's a fairly lengthy contract. We need to allow time, obviously, with the design build for the design to under, be undertaken before the uh, construction can actually begin. 
We have mentioned it before, and it's planned to grow out this year, is again design build for the Constant Creek Bridge replacement on Highway 132, which will include a realignment of the highway for the new bridge, which is north of the existing alignment. And when the, uh, when the uh, new bridge is in place, we will be removing the old bridge and regrading out the existing alignment there for roughly a kilometer. Included with that, we will also include resurfacing of 132 from Constant Creek Bridge to County Road 5. We undertook culvert replacements in that area a couple of years ago, so it's time for the pavement to be rehabilitated in that area. We have, um, like I mentioned, the preliminary design is underway on Highway 148, so we expect some work to fall out of that uh, when the preliminary design is actually completed. Um, we have uh, obviously work at the CPR bridge there. Um, we're continuing to work with the county. I know the county is uh, pursuing acquisition of that uh, line as a trail, so we continue to work with the county on what the future use of that crossing will be. Again, we have a number of structural culverts which have been identified for needs that will be replaced over the next five years. And as I mentioned, on Highway 17, you'll see us out there doing some standalone center line culvert replacements as well based on condition. So that's it for the capital contract update. Now I'd offer a quick update on where we're at with our preliminary design on Highway 148. The design study is well underway. Uh, we had the first public information center in July of 2015 where we outlined the existing conditions, the opportunities for improvements and so forth. The uh, team is currently working through the different uh, design alternatives that will be brought forward to a second PIC which we expect sometime in early 2016 where we will identify what our preferred planning alternative is for that. And now, Warden, I'd like to move into the Team Highway 17 update. As Catherine mentioned, I know there's a number of new people around the room. Uh, when I was last here, I presented to the previous council, so I'd just like to take a moment and just update everyone, um, familiarize himself with what Team Highway 17 is, our mandate, and our role. So the Team Highway 17 is, a, is an acronym. It stands for Taking Effective Actions to Manage Highway 17. We are working with uh, Steve at the county. We have uh, OPP participation, so both uh, Northeastern Region OPP and Eastern Region OPP participation. And we have a number of players from the ministry. Uh, Bill is at the table. I co-chair with our traffic uh, section head, which is Christina Klein. And um, we also have MTO road user safety staff, which help us in the, uh, on the management of messages uh, for road user safety needs. We were formed in the fall of 2012. Uh, we've had 10 meetings since then, with our last meeting being September 23rd, 2015. Our mandate is to identify any safety and or operational areas of concern along the highway and our area of concern is from Campbell Drive, so the two-lane section from Campbell Drive through to the Renfrew County boundary near Du Riviere. And we sit and meet as required to discuss potential mitigating improvements for any area of concerns we may identify and also identify potential public education opportunities. So just a summary of the work that's been undertaken to date since we first met in 2012. We undertook a trend analysis of collisions on the corridor that helped us identify whether there was any areas of concern that we should focus on, and we've previously reported on that at Council. We also undertook a left turn lane warrant analysis for all the intersections on Highway 17 which currently don't have left turn lanes, and we identified some intersections that could benefit from some left turn lanes out of that. We undertook a review and analysis of intersection modes of control. So one of the major concerns we are aware of is uh, the number of uh, intersections with signals on Highway 17 and, and the, the delays that that caused to uh, long distance high speed traffic. Um, however, signals as well provide the opportunity for traffic to cross the highways and gain access to the highways. So we did take a, a review as, highway, as Team Highway 17 to review 
those intersections which currently are signalized and are near warranted for signalized to look at whether there are opportunities for changes to the mode of control such as roundabouts or staged interchanges. And one of the things that came out of that was the installation of some advanced active warning flashers which I'll get to in a minute. We did undertake as well a review of centerline rumble strips on the corridor. We undertook that in two stages. There was the stretch from, uh, from Campbell Drive all the way through to, uh, to Chalk River and then the Chalk River stretch all the way through to the uh, county boundary. And uh, we identified as well that centerline rumble strips would improve uh, highway safety in the corridor or should improve highway safety in corridor and we undertaken an implementation as a result of that review. The team as well has sat down and uh, had input into emergency detour routes which uh, need to be needed to be updated for any incidents that would occur on the corridor and we filtered that back through Steve to the municipalities involved. So what have we done? What, have, what changes have been made to the corridor as a result of those reviews that have been undertaken? We did early on implement paved shoulders and centerline rumble strips near the Haley Road, County Road 653 area. As you're probably aware, that's where we transition into some, uh, some tighter horizontal curves. The highway goes from the staged freeway that was built in the 1970s uh, out into a uh, tighter alignment. So we identified that the Haley Road intersection was one of the ones that may benefit from a left turn lane, so as an interim we provided centerline rubble strips and paved shoulders in that area. Enhanced signing along the corridor. We've undertaken enhanced deer signing. We've probably seen the larger signs out there. Warning of uh, enhanced deer activity for the next X number of kilometers. Um, those have been installed in various locations as warranted. And just recently we've undertaken some advanced notification of the passing lanes, so more of a countdown, a 10 kilometer, five kilometer, you know, the passing lanes are coming up to reassure people that perhaps they can wait till the passing lanes to make their movement um, for, to pass. In the intersection control review, we identified that uh, the intersections at O'Brien Road, Bruce Street, and Paquette Road could benefit from the installation of the advanced active warning flashers. So those, those signals are the, the amber beacons that come on as the signal is getting ready to change to amber warning vehicles at a certain distance ahead of the intersection that you need to be prepared to stop. And those have been installed and we uh, plan to monitor those over the next five years or so, determine whether it's made a safety improvement at the intersections. Centerline rumble strips, so this one has, uh, has really taken off. We did, uh, as I mentioned, undertake a review of centerline rumble strips, found that the highest benefit would be in the, in the stretch with the higher traffic volumes to, uh, from basically Shield Drive through to uh, Chalk River. And the centerline rumble strips, as I'm sure you've all seen them out there now, they basically provide a tactile and audible warning that you are encroaching onto the centerline if you didn't realize it. And it also, uh, reaffirms where your vehicle is when you do make a passing opportunity across the center line. And uh, we did implement the uh, installation of those, uh, partly be due to pavement condition um, and partly due to where we were with construction contracts in the corridor. But we did complete from Shield Drive through to County Road 40. That has been done. County Road 40 to County Road 24, when we were in there, there was an active contract. We couldn't get in there to install it at the time. So that work will be, that area will be installed in 2016 as part of the paving job from County Road 26 to the Petawaba Laurentian Hills boundary. The work out here from County Road 24 to County Road 26 has also been completed. As I mentioned, as the pavement is, is, uh, is improved from County Road 26 to Petawawa Laurentian Hills, that will be installed in 2016. And then the next stretch from the boundary of Petawawa Laurentian Hills into Chalk River, that will be installed when that pavement is improved. And then the plan is, again, to continue to monitor the effectiveness of the centerline rubble strips. We probably need about five years of data to determine whether we've made a safety impact to the corridor. Um, in the stretch from Shield Drive to Chalk River before we determine whether it's beneficial to continue west of Chalk River. 
and at that time it'll probably line up well with our need to resurface those pavements in that area. Uh, the Haley Road area, so as I mentioned, we did undertake paved shoulders and centerline rumble strips early on in Team Highway 17 in that area. But we also identified that that area is one of the um, one of the tighter areas. As I mentioned, you're coming out of the staged freeway alignment where you have a couple of curves that are posted at 80 kilometers an hour. And uh, we identified the need that perhaps there's three or four intersections in that area. The Haley Road intersection in there did come up high on the left turn lane warrant analysis. However, perhaps um, instead of just plunking in a left turn lane there, maybe there's something else we can do in that area um, as opposed to that. So Team Highway 17 identified a preliminary design in this area, and it has been started in conjunction with the Highway 148 preliminary design, and they're looking at alternatives in that area, perhaps closing some of the intersections and moving improvements up to one of the other intersections just to improve safety through that area. So that. Again, alternative development is underway and expect to hear more of that in the near future. Some of the road user safety uh, work that's been undertaken, championed by Team Highway 17. Um, our section, road user safety section of MTO has worked with OPP uh, to deliver some targeted road safety marketing campaigns in the area. Uh, the two uh, higher order ones were the safe winter driving campaigns and again knowing or understanding that we do have a number of wildlife collisions in, in Renfrew County so targeted wildlife collisions and just recently through the holiday period this year uh, the OPP um, we sat down in September and identified that uh, perhaps a target group may be uh, post-secondary students traveling the highway uh, Thanksgiving periods and uh, and holiday periods uh, a lot of travel back and forth between the uh, post-secondary institutions in Ottawa and North Bay, Sudbury area on Highway 17. So throughout the holiday period, I believe it was 1st of December to sort of uh, second week of January, the, uh, the OPP targeted uh, a number of the post-secondary students to send out Twitter feeds just to reinforce road safety messaging um, as the students were preparing to travel for the holiday period. So the ministry's next steps with respect to uh, all the presentation material I provided this morning. Again, as I mentioned, uh, we continue with the property acquisition on phases three and four, and we do plan to start in earnest this year the negotiations with TransCanada Pipelines to improve the crossing at Goshen Road. And we will continue to work on the Highway 148 preliminary design and plan to see a PIC in the near future, looking at the alternatives there. And again, we will continue to meet as a group for Team Highway 17, look at any future potential areas for improvement and continue to assess the changes that we've made in the corridor and determine whether we have made improvements and uh, any further modifications we can make. So with that warranted, that's my presentation and I ask any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, comments, Councillor uh, Gibson, please. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that presentation. As uh, probably one who's in the uh, upper decile of highway travelers, I can tell you that the most effective thing you have done in highway safety is your center land rumble strips. And I would certainly encourage you to keep on that program. And I certainly hope that the uh, five year data supports uh, my anecdotal comments. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. And uh, Kathy, would you like to make any concluding remarks, or? I, I think, Warden, uh, we're always delighted to be here, and uh, look forward to coming back again. Well, good. Thank you very much. This has been a very successful. Uh, strategy that was mutually developed by the county and by the ministry to meet on a regular basis to review uh, the significance of the of the investment in the county of uh, the MTO transportation network within the county and we do appreciate the uh, 
the information and the willingness to share the information as well as to demonstrate uh, the infrastructural renewal, whether it's culverts or safety devices or and especially the uh, Team 17 approach has been, has been very effective for us and, and we understand that it's been modeled uh, uh, and exported to other areas of the, town, of the province as well. So we're, we're grateful for that. We, we've often felt quite smugly that we have an expertise that should be shared in, so thank you for doing that. Uh, and again, thank you. Uh, Kathy was here uh, a couple weeks back, I guess about 11 days ago, to talk to our, uh, our Highway 17 committee and shared some information with us, and you'll see that in the minutes. And, and again, thank you very much for your efforts there. One thing that she noted was that she had been with the ministry 20, 21 years, and she had also noted, and, and sometimes we lose that, that overall vision, but she noted that in that 21 years, Highway 17 had expanded from Bayshore, in, in essence, of the outskirts, at the outskirts of the then city of Ottawa before it joined with uh, with the surrounding township to the present site. And I think you know that is something that I had forgotten um, in my impatience to have it run, run past my front door. So I, I, you know, thank you for bringing that to our attention and thank you for your efforts. And now, Mr. Hutton, uh, correspondence. Thank you very much, Mr. Ward, members of the County Council. We have one piece of correspondence, a, a thank you from the Kula's family to, ex to express their appreciation for the lovely floor arrangements uh, that were sent on behalf of, of the Father Bob Kula. So thanks, uh, Mr. Ward, members of the County Council. All of the correspondence has been, been forwarded to the appropriate community. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll move to Chair Murphy and Finance and Admin, please. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Wharton. To all of the County Council, we, your Finance and Administration Committee, wish to report and recommend as follows. Number one is the Council payroll. Number two, Treasurer's report. Number three, the OMPF, uh, sort of some interesting um, things in that are uh, the uploads from the county of Renfrew. For the county of Renfrew. Number four is the MPAC uh, assessment, a letter from the President Chief Administrative Officer for MPAC. Number five is the 2016 IT training calendar. Number six, Provincial Offenses Administration change in default fees, which we discussed uh, during the budget. Uh, number seven, insurance coverage for the county of Renfrew. Number eight is the FIRs. Um, they are noted, at, um, my co-chair, or my vice chair, uh, Kim Love and I both noted that, although it, is, it does say the FIRs for 2015, these are the year ends for 2014, so just as, as a note. Uh, number nine is the Renfrew County District Health Unit um, uh, regarding the um, decrease in the payments, another thing we discussed at budget. Number 10 is the Power Down Special Payment Program. One more year of good news story. Number 11 is the Path Forward for Ontario. Some interesting uh, reading from Omafra. Uh, number 12 is the Queen's University Certificate Program, uh, Mentally Healthy Workplace. Uh, there is an in-class session here on February 17th. Uh, number 13 is the Leadership Training, Customer Service Excellence. There's a workshop on February 22nd. Uh, number 14, the Mandatory Health and Safety Awareness Training. Um, so if you haven't uh, completed this or haven't gotten your certificate in, please do so. Uh, number 15, the County of Renfrew United Way Campaign Overview for 2015. Number 16, the Accessibility Advisory Committee. There is a compliance report that was uh, filed with the province on December 29th. Resolutions uh, got the election of board and term of office. A resolution number FACC-16-01-02, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that a one-year term for the position of board continue as per procedural bylaw, number 85-10 as amended. Um, this was an email from Councillor Grunts. Uh, wondering if we should go to a two-year term. I'm sure we have some discussion about that. Uh, number 18, elected officials' benefits. Resolution number FACC-16-01-05. 
moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the dispensing fee cap for the elected officials be increased from 750 to 850 per prescription, and the addition of a vision benefit of $300 per 24 months be added to the elected officials' benefit plan effective February 1st, 2016. Uh, number 19 is our benefits for non-union employees. A resolution number FACC-16-01-06, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the addition of a vision benefit of $300 for 24 months be added to the non-union employee benefit plan, effective February 1st, 2016, and further that a revised employment bylaw number one be adopted at the February session of County Council. Uh, and I'm sorry, I just... There we go. And uh, further, a resolution number FACC-16-01-07, moved by the chair, second by the committee, that the lifetime maximum up to age 65 for the early retirement benefit for all non-union employees be increased from 75,000 to 100,000 uh, who retire after February 1st, 2016, and further, that a revised employment bylaw number one be adopted at the February session of County Council. Number 20 is the student wage increase. Uh, resolution number FACC-16-01-08, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the employment bylaw number one be amended to reflect the changes to the student wage increase effective October 1st, 2015, and that further that county council be advised of any future changes to the student wage, but the changes to the employment bylaw number one be made automatically. Uh, number 21, uh, the changes in the CRA rates for kilometers. The resolution number FACC-16-01-09, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the council, the county council dis decreased the mileage rates from 55 cents per kilometer to 54 cents per kilometer for the first 5,000 kilometers per year, and from 49 cents per kilometer to 48 cents per kilometer for all kilometers over 5,000 per year, effective January 1st, 2016, and further that a revised employment bylaw number one be brought forward to the February session of County Council. Uh, number two is the membership for AMO, a resolution number FACC-16-01-13, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the year 2016 membership to the Association of Municipalities of Ontario in the amount of $8,320, including HSD, be approved. Number 23 is the 2016 FCM membership dues, and the resolution goes, number FACC-16-01-14, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the year 2016 membership to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities in the amount of $12,671.08, including HST, be approved. And we move on to bylaws, the big bylaw for this year. Nope, not yet. The, the 2016 County of Renfrew budget. Um, moved by Councillor Business D. Moore, seconded by Councillor Packett, that a bylaw to adopt the estimates of the sums required during the year for 2016 for general capital and all purposes of the County of Renfrew and in the amount of $40,728,834 be adopted at the next session of County Council and further that the 2016 tax rates for the county purposes be adopted by bylaw after the adoption of the 2016 tax policy bylaws. Number 25 is the Human Resources Policies and Procedures Revision moved by the resolution number FACC 16 dash zero, oh, dash zero one dash ten. I'm sorry, my cursor keeps moving around. Moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that the county council approve the recommended changes to the human resources corporate policy D dash one short term disability plan, and further that a bylaw to amend bylaw 63 dash zero three being a bylaw to establish human resources, corporate policies and procedures for the County of Renfrew be adopted at this session of County Council. Number 26 is a benefits renewal of services and the resolution, it, the resolution number FACC-16-01-11, moved by the Chair, second by committee, the County Council adopt a bylaw to enter into a service agreement renewal with Cowan Benefits Consulting for the period of January 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016, and further that County Council adopt a bylaw to enter into a service agreement renewal 
with Manning Life Financial for the provision of a benefits insurance program, policy 4704, for the period of January 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016, at this session of County Council, all of which is respectfully submitted by myself as chair and committee members, Dunning Hugh, Hemo, Love, Miller, Reinwald, Sweet, and Business Moore. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from members of council? On item number one. Item number two. Three. Well, I'm sorry, Councilor Sweet. Just by thank you, uh, Warden, that we have an update on the PF, which is the major, fu major funding envelope for uh, uh, municipalities, unconditional funding. Uh, you'll notice uh, it is down uh, year over year. About two years ago, it was $850 million. It is now down to $505 million. Um, I made two, three presentations to the Minister of Finance on, on this particular initiative. Uh, where it's going in 2017 and beyond, we don't know. Of interest, though, was the $5 million that was included. Uh, to assist Northern Ontario uh, municipalities because of their uh, financial situation. Also an interesting part of that, uh, and uh, I think a gain for, for us in particular, when I say us, for those who have a high concentration of farms within their community, as you know, the farm tax credit was down to 25% of the residential rate, and as such, it's a provincial program, it's on the backs of the property taxpayers. Uh, the uh, province of Ontario saw fit uh, to move $5 million into the program, which was otherwise uh, cancelled in 2012. Some $47 million was eliminated from that silo. It gives those who have high concentrations of farm uh, communities, uh, farm properties, I should say, within their communities, uh, an opportunity to, to capture uh, some of the challenges as a result of the loss of revenue because of the reassessment or the, the provincial program, it's the better way to say it, uh, coming down from the maximum down to 25% of the residential tax rate. So there was a movement there, and that is a, a movement away from the normal uh, process that they used that were not up to this point in time recognizing uh, that, that particular issue. But uh, as I say, we made uh, uh, three, three uh, presentations to, uh, to Mr. Kutsky's favorite uh, person, Mr. Alan Mahaney, the mm -hmm. Assistant Deputy Minister, and also to Minister Sousa, uh, the Sousa, I should say, on three separate occasions. So this was a gain for, for us, because there's a large number in Eastern Ontario that have very, very high levels of farm concentration uh, in, in their municipalities. Where we're going in 2017, uh, we should be concerned about that because the criteria is not out there. Uh, we are asking for a certain increase, whether that will come or not, we don't know. But that will be part of the mix called What's Next Ontario coming forward. And the warden will find out about that uh, on uh, Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dunn, you then uh, referred to please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Warden. Uh, just in response, I'm uh, certainly a glass half full uh, type of person. So I want to acknowledge that the um, initiative with respect to recognizing uh, farmland and the 25% uh, property tax rate applied to qualifying farmland um, is, is uh, a crack in the door. The unfortunate thing <clears throat> that it is perhaps a benefit in eastern Ontario, it's of no benefit, I would suggest, in Redford County because I'm pretty sure that between Councillor Miller and I, we probably have the largest concentrations <clears throat> of farmland in our communities. We nowhere near come near the bar uh, that has been set to the threshold uh, for uh, access to those, uh, those funds designated for some amelioration to the uh, demands placed on us from our farmland taxation. So that bar, I think, is going to have to be substantially lowered and that fund probably substantially increased before it will have uh, any particular influence for Redford County. Uh, I'll go with Councillor Sweet as an answer and then Jim Murphy. Councillor Sweet? Well, in, in response to that, that is very, that is exactly the, the, uh, the position that EMO has taken on this particular situation. Uh, no question. And then we'll move that forward and continue to move that forward. Um, and we'll see where it goes. 
And as I said, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. There is a crack in the, in the, in the door, so to speak. Uh, not something we've seen ever uh, in, well, since they, they removed the $47 million that was in that silo for those who had uh, opportunities to collect it through the Ontario Partnership Fund. And there is part of the reduction that you see from two years ago, $850 million, down to what it is today, $505 million. However, uh, we were very encouraged by the move towards that recognition that municipalities that have farms uh, in their communities are struggling because of the reduction in assessment. Thank you. Councillor Murphy. I apologize. Just as a matter of housekeeping, could we repair um, the Honourable Ted McMeekin's last name? I should have caught it earlier. I apologize. I just, when it goes out in the public, it should be. Sure. Thank you. Sorry about that. Should be an M instead of a K. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. No, I, you know, Item number four. Item number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Perhaps the chair of the, the board of directors of the Renfrew County District Health Unit would like to speak up. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Mayor or Councillor Vizneski Moore on your election yesterday. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to uh, that position and um, I, uh, I went in there not expecting to be the chair, but I am and so and that's okay too. So I look forward to uh, working with us and we're very proud that uh, the board was able to present uh, two point Whatever it is, the, the decrease that we're asking for this year uh, for the obligated municipalities. So, anyways, that's good news, and thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 10. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Sweet. No, and, and I'm doing the annual presentation, I guess, uh, uh, as we go through the report. Oh, item number 11. Uh, number 10, that's another uh, initiative that on the same day uh, we made the, the, the presentation. We also asked about the power dam, and I was told at that point in time we would be absolutely delighted with the uh, recommendation coming forward. I, I have to tell you, I'm less than delighted with, with that. I was asking for money, not uh, not a deferral. However, it has been deferred, and that that is a it hasn't been it hasn't been thrown out. So that's that's positive in that regard. So again, we'll continue to monitor that and advocate for uh, for those who have dams in their uh, in their municipalities. Thank you. Item number 11. Item 12. Item 13. Item 14. Uh, I apologize, I haven't completed that yet. I'll make an effort to uh, try and get them soonish. Hopefully, the end of February, but I'll, I'll definitely have it done by the end of March. Um, item 15. And again, thank you to staff for leading the way on this and raising our awareness uh, of our need in the community and also uh, also uh, contributing so much time and effort to making it, making, it, uh, making it a success. Thank you. Item 16. Item 17. Councillor Brents. Actually, I'm just uh, through you, Mr. Warden, to the chair, I just wanted to you know, so no more support from uh, the committee. Um, we recently sat through a election in this chambers, two very qualified men with uh, multiple ideas, and I did not feel that a one-year term was adequate to uh, give them time to get their feet on the ground and promote their ideas. When I look at the uh, number of photos on the wall, see that uh, we have councillors who have come back second and possibly third terms through one year terms and I just felt that possibly that was a reflection upon not being able to complete what they had initially came forward with as ideas to uh, advance in for county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillor is asking you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, um, I have been, I was the warden for two years and uh, 
the job, uh, you know, is you do get your feet kind of going, and then it's a, a great opportunity in your second year to be able to complete things. But you can still do that. I think that um, some people, the job is very, very, um, it's a busy one, uh, and uh, um, some of us could run and decide that uh, maybe it is too much, then that opportunity is that you complete your year and you let somebody else have an opportunity. Also, these chambers are wise enough, if they think that person sitting in the chair should be back there the next year, it doesn't cost us anything to have an election to sit back and elect and put that person back for two, three, four, whatever, however many terms we want. So I really think it's better that county council makes those decisions based on the performance of the warden. Um, and also the person sitting there may not want uh, to do another year because of the busyness of it. None of you know until you sit in that chair what that job uh, entails. And uh, so um, uh, even though I agree, I do agree. Uh, two years is a great, and I was very honored that county council felt that I could do that job and, and re-elected me. But yet I think we, uh, in our wisdom, we're all smart enough to know, let's give them another year to complete or not. And uh, so I think the uh, one year term is a good one. Again, they can run two, three or four years. Um, and, um, but county council should make that decision and they should make that decision collaboratively. So anyways, I'm sorry that I disagree. I understand what you're saying and I agree with it. But it doesn't cost us anything to have an election and it shows that person in the chair that they have the confidence of county council, at least the majority. So anyways, take that for whatever. I, I did sit in that chair and I know the obligations that require it. But I do understand your, uh, your position and I agree with it. But I still think the election is something that uh, we need to keep in place. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 18. Item 19. 20. 21. Councillor Kingsbury, please. Just out of curiosity, Mr. Warden, I wonder how much money are we really saving here when we drop it one cent on each? Is the, is the saving worth the paperwork? Probably not. <laughs> we'll, ask Mr. we'll ask Mr. Kutchie, he's at right in his chambers. Uh, 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 Mr. Ward, members of council, I don't have that information right now. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is that the County of Renfrew has, uh, in the past for many, many years, followed the CRA guideline, and that's what's being promoted. It's just because we don't. Well, what I can suggest to you is that in looking at the um, up to date for December 2015, County Council's mileage was $43,487.99. So I'm, I'm assuming that a, a penny difference would be only $1,000 at the most, but I have a degree in social work, so I'll hide behind that. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Council Bunny, please. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I just have a question, I think perhaps more so for my own council. <clears throat> Given that uh, Revenue Canada publishes these, is the payment of anything in excess of what Revenue Canada publishes, is that considered then a taxable benefit as opposed to an expense? Mr. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why we call it. Thank you. Item 22, 23, 24. Four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Report as a whole. Move, please. So moved, Mr. Warden. Thank you. You've heard the motion. Discussion. All of those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you. You'll have a, a brown envelope that any that are some of our our items of of uh, importance to uh, show our uh, our products to you. There are um, some decals and there are some uh, uh, 
glass, eyeglass, and or uh, computer screen and Blackberry uh, sort of personal device cleaners. We work very hard to brand here on a regular basis, so please use those with uh, with uh, the public in mind. Show them every chance that you get. Also, you have two copies of the yearbook. One is for yourself, and one is for your home municipality. It's a very quick reference. I find sometimes when I'm asked to speak on topics, and people will ask you, well, what do you do? So it's nice to be able to flip through it and find two or three things from each committee so that you can, you can uh, spice up your presentation about, uh, about some things that we, we do. And they also ask you about the terms of reference. So you've got a very general terms of reference for each committee at, at the front of it. And, uh, and there's some history about the county of Redford, and then also uh, and, uh, about and some also some biographies about, about you. Yeah. Uh, so you can flip those out very quickly if someone's going to do something. I also should uh, take the opportunity to, on behalf of uh, Councillor Farr, introduce uh, Councillor uh, uh, Plum and also Councillor Bros, representing North Island Wilberforce. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Next, we'll move to operations and Councillor Dunham. Thank you, Mr. Ward. And uh, Council, we please that there's only seven items in this, and not 26, which will also be drawing breath and fresh air for a long time. That's how I do the rosary. Uh, that, yeah, I think. To the Council of the Corporation of the County of Redford, members of County Council, we, your operations committee, wish to report and recommend as follows. On uh, information, uh, you will note uh, the, the application for uh, funding through the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Uh, I think this was a yes, built in Canada fund. It was unsuccessful. It was a substantial ask. Uh, unfortunately, it was declined. On winter operations, uh, there's a chart showing the, uh, the operations through and through uh, 2015, close of 2015. Uh, there's a call, actually, I believe, it's, it's the call for nominations for the road still open. Or is it, no, it is still open. Getting an audit to do from it is not all according to this side of me. Uh, in any case, uh, perhaps there will be some clarity there. Uh, Mr. Bowen? Thank you, Warden, for you to also uh, don't even uh, members of council. It's actually an election that will take place during the Ontario Good Bones Convention. Uh, it is in fact at the end of February. That's correct. The, uh, the nominations are closed. I understand. They are most okay. Unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, there was no one from uh, Redford County that, that was able to put their name forward for. I believe we are the southeast, and in fact, they are the southeast is going to be claimed to their position. There are some elections for the board, but not for our particular area. Uh, I believe notice is, it has or is going out to uh, uh, lower tier municipalities with respect to the uh, votes and tenders. County is going to be issuing on uh, item number five uh, bylaw on, on uh, County Road 51 is the uh, agreement on a snowmobile trail. Uh, council will note that there was uh, efforts expended in, in getting the collaboration and being sensitive to issues that may have been identified by the Town of Petawawa with respect to the uh, snowmobile trail agreement that is going to be put in place hopefully by bylaw. Um, with both the Keepna and Snow Country Snowmobile Associations. And the resolution uh, directing on that is OPCC 16 01 02, moved by chair, seconded by committee, that the land use agreement between the County of Renfrew and Keepna Snowmobile Club and Snow Country Snowmobile Association be approved, and that a bylaw to authorize execution of the agreement be passed. And that the land use agreement between the County of Renfrew and the Town of Petawawa, dated January 29, 2003, be terminated. And further, that the land use agreement between the County of Renfrew and Keepna Snowmobile Club, dated January 18, 2002, be terminated. Uh, item number six is the uh, transfer of, uh, of properties on the Round Lake Road to the adjoining uh, landowners. Um, the, in this particular uh, case, um, Clarence and Judith Shires. Uh, moved by uh, resolution number OPCC 16 01 03, moved by chair, seconded by committee, 
that a bylaw be passed authorizing the sale of Part 6 on Reference Plan 49R-7300 to Clarence and Judith Shires for the sum of $2,280. Item number seven is uh, a road access agreement, uh, resolution number OPCC-16-01-04, moved by chair, seconded by committee, that the road access agreement between Mr. Phillips C. Windle and the County of Redford be approved, and that a bylaw to authorize execution of the road access agreement be passed, all of which is respectfully submitted by myself, Chair Michael Donahue, and committee members Emo, Farr, Brunts, Kingsbury, Murphy, and Peckett. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from members of council on item one? Item two, three, four, five, six, seven. <coughs> the report as a whole. Can I have a mover, please? So moved the report. You heard the motion, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you. And we'll move to development of property with Chair Sweet, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ward, and members of the County Council. Your development of property committee wish to report and recommend that follows a number of information items. The first one is Eastern Ontario Growth Plan. Um, and uh, we've been quite vocal about this particular initiative. There's a letter there from uh, Ted McMeekin talking about uh, uh, talking to everybody uh, about this. Uh, particular initiative. You can find that letter on page 111, uh, just so that uh, we can tie this in. This is a, a priority, as you can read through the, the uh, press release from the East Ontario Warden's Caucus. Uh, this is a priority for, for the East Ontario Warden's Caucus in terms of discussing this particular initiative in favor of more of an economic development strategy rather than an East Ontario Development Growth Initiative. This has been brought to, to the province of Ontario uh, through the, uh, the AMO initiative as well. And uh, uh, we'll continue to see where that uh, leads us. But there will be uh, conversations, one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, as you see with uh, regards to this. Item number two on March the 3rd, the Agriculture uh, and Agribusiness Center, Mr. David Weibaugh, uh, Weibaugh, pardon me, Business Development Officer, is having a workshop at Horton Town Center, uh, Community Center, uh, on March the 3rd. Item number three, the Ontario Small Urban Municipalities Association, as you know, through the Development of Property Committee, we've been uh, challenging uh, the DMV group, uh, Economic Development, to bring conferences and seminars, etc., to Redford County. Uh, we were successful uh, bringing the association of road superintendents uh, to the area, and I'm suggesting that we go after this particular one. I understand all things being equal, that in 2018, this could be Renfrew County's opportunity to bring this uh, to the to, uh, to Renfrew County. Uh, with that in mind, um, I know it's in 2018 as I indicated, but um, in 2017, if you're successful in 2018, you have to go to the conference and set up a booth and all of this sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we should take a long, hard look between now and uh, this conference and taking a look at sending someone down there uh, to take a look at what is necessary uh, to host this. I understand that if we are uh, interested in it in uh, 2018, we can get the nod to do this. So this is positive. Uh, um, anyone who's been to the small uh, um, uh, conference, there's 250 to 300 people come with their spouses of 600 individuals coming in, and of course when they travel they spend money, and that's what we want to see coming into uh, Brentford County. So I would suggest, Mr. Warden, that somehow or other you take down and sit down and have a look at this. It's not until May, but have someone uh, go down there and just see uh, exactly what's involved, what's uh, what we have to do, etc. If we're successful the following year, as I say, we have to put something in place as far as a booth down there to promote a particular conference. The number four long-term energy plan, again, a priority not only for our AMO, but for the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus, and that letter can be found on page 112 and 13 from Minister Shirelli. Tourism awards, <coughs> anyone that uh, you feel worthy, uh, please uh, make them, uh, uh, make that nomination available to, uh, to either to the Warden or to uh, 
to uh, Rose, uh, Rose's office and with our Bruce too. Anyway, Bruce, you're on the you're on the hook too. Okay. Anyway, anyone uh, that is uh, uh, you feel worthy of that organization or individual, uh, the opportunity is there. Canadian Pacific Rail uh, Banded Corridor. We have met with the uh, uh, legal counsel and uh, we're very close uh, uh, to this. Uh, sometime later on in February, we'll be having a meeting with the partners to with the lawyer in there to discuss the actual agreement in principle and uh, future lease. So it's it's moving forward uh, uh, quite well, and I uh, hope to have uh, some sort of recommendation um, in front of not only development of property but also in front of County Council a little later on this, this year to conclude this this odyssey, which started in 2009. Um, Ontario Provincial uh, OPP facility, I think we're going to have an update here, physical update, or not physical update, but pictures, what, a thousand words? And so we're going to have a look at it here. On the first slide, this is what we started with. This was the vacant land uh, across from the road from the Renfrew County Place facility, Railroad Rose. Uh, this was the uh, site work that was uh, done in terms of uh, excavating the site and bringing in fill. So we did need to bring in some engineers to for this project uh, to level the site off and provide for some drainage as well as uh, access. Again, uh, what's happened here on this picture, if you would have been by the site, what they've done is, before they brought in the engineered fill, they exca excavated probably between 8 and 10 feet down from the elevation of the native soil, and that is where the footings went. So we'll go to the next one, Rose. Again, so you can see where it's, um, it's excavated out, and the engineered fill is put in, and that sets the, um, the foundation for the footings to go in. Next one. You'll see that um, when they poured the fill, the footings, um, They've uh, brought the concrete truck in that has the uh, uh, the arm in and just moved along the uh, exterior footings and poured the, uh, the concrete. Exterior footings are in. Next one. So walls go up. You'll note that the uh, uh, frost barrier has been put in. So um, what they did was anywhere uh, three feet down from uh, the frost uh, level, it's all done with, uh, the, with foam. Again, interior uh, footings. Next one, again, continuing to pour. So we're into November now, next one. December 3rd, we're pretty much complete in terms of the, uh, uh, the footings for the structure. Next, December 9th, you can see, now they've backfilled all those interior uh, footings. Over 300 loads of fill um, has gone into uh, um, the structure at this point. Um, once they fill, 18 inches of fill goes in, uh, the large compactor goes in and compacts all that fill material. Then they put another 18 inches in, do it all over again. So uh, a bit of a process to get that part done. Again, uh, an aerial um, shot of uh, just generally the footprint of the building and what it's going to look like. So if you look where the blocks are placed at the back, that's actually the, um, the garage area uh, where they'll pull in. Sorry, and uh, close to where the cell is next. Um, you'll see the interior um, uh, footings that are in place. As we get through, we'll go to the next one, Rose. Okay, go to the next one, please. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no um, that, is the, um, that is the spot. Maybe just go back one more, Rose. One. An interior, please. That will be a second level. And on top of the second level, um, that's where all the HVAC and the mechanical components will sit in the structure. So. Um, I thought there was another photo with it all scaffolded and tarped. That is all done now. Um, as of tomorrow, all the structural steel will arrive on site, and I suspect it will look like a building um, in the next two or three weeks. So we'll have another further update. But now that, that, that all that foundation work is done, this thing will really take, up, take off on us. I think maybe we're one or two weeks behind schedule. Um, we're also waiting for the province to announce the award of the contract for the leasehold improvements. Um, if it turns out to be the same firm that we have, E. Samur and Sons, um, we'll make up that two weeks, no problem. I'll leave it at that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan.
you. <coughs> Thank you. Did you uh, at this time, Mr. Warren, did, did you want to ask if there's any questions? Yes, or certainly. Are there any, any, any fresh questions or comments while uh, uh, Councillor uh, Duncan, please? Thank you, uh, Mr. Warden. To uh, through you to, uh, to Mr. Moore, I wonder if, if you could point out uh, there's something in the internal footings was where there was a substantial cost saving uh, in the 2.0 version of this this building. I wonder from that aerial if it was possible for you just to point it out or have you an idea. Word through you to Council Donahue. I think it will be difficult to see. Um, the, the way to show it would be to have the two plans side by side. Um, the, originally, what was uh, uh, was proposed was significantly more substantial footings and more of them. Um, the design has changed from a um, pier type of footing that will be that has been put in as well, as opposed to slab footings that um, would have run throughout the building. So it would be very difficult to distinguish just with the photo, sir. Thank you. Councillor Sweet, thank you very much. <coughs> with that, we'll go on to item number eight, the Smart Growth for Communities uh, Act in 2015. Uh, you can see that uh, there is the most significant reform that we've seen on the uh, development, uh, planning and development in, in Ontario in almost a decade with over, as it says there, 120 amendments to the Planning Act and Development Charges. Um, the table for County Council is the information, uh, government summary of these changes. Um, I'll note uh, that the warden did make uh, uh, a presentation to the Standing Committee on Social Policy in November the 3rd. However, um, I think of importance to all of us around the, the, this, this room is the, what the Planning Division is intending to do. Uh, they're pay, preparing a, a report uh, for circulation to all of our municipalities, summarizing the relevant changes to the Planning Act. Not all of us have development fees, uh, but those who do have some, there are some significant changes there, but it doesn't overall affect the majority of municipalities around this chamber. The Planning Act does, and so our, our planning staff is putting together a, a document that will be circulated to all of our two municipalities. Item number nine is the Ottawa Valley Tourist Budget, the Tourist Association Budget, which can be found on page 127. Uh, and you see there, resolution number DPCC 160105, moved by the chair, second by committee, that County Council approved the Ottawa Valley Tourist Association uh, 2016 budget. Highway uh, 17 Extension Advisory Committee, I think uh, we've heard quite a bit about that, the presentation that was on earlier on this morning. Uh, with that, however, there is a little bit of a need uh, going forward. Our advisory committee uh, is looking to to uh, to put in place a uh, how would you what would you call it? a lobbyist communication, communication and government relations specialist, better <laughs> <laughs> known as a lobbyist. Okay. <laughs> uh, resolution number DPC uh, fifteen ten seventy one move. Uh, by uh, well, staff, no, that was the direction to come forward. Pardon me, we don't have to go there. Um, resolution number DPCC 16105, moved by chair, second by committee, the county council approved payment to a maximum of $25,000 to engage a lobbyist specialist for the purpose of promoting the extension of a four lane highway, uh, Highway 17 through Renfrew County, County to be taken from the 2016 provision for an unallocated budget. Summer co Company, there's a bylaw there, a summer company has been going on for approximately 12, 14, 15 years, something of that nature. And this is an update to the operation and funding agreement with the province of Ontario. Uh, resolution number DP CC 160105, moved by chair, signed by committee. The County Council adopt a bylaw to execute an agreement with the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development and Trade, MEDEI, to undertake the summer company program through Enterprise Renfrew County. A similarly, start a company, uh, amendment number one, operation and funding agreement relationship again with the province of Ontario. Resolution number DPECC 160107, moved by chair, second by committee. 
that County Council adopt the bylaw to amend bylaw 1914 being a bylaw to authorize the Wharton and Clerk to execute an agreement with the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development, Trade, Employment and Infrastructure, NEDEI, to undertake the Starter Company program through Enterprise Rent for County and the past, and follow the Ministry of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure Starter Company amending agreement number one be executed. Item number 13 is the resolution that you see there uh, for the lease, a five-year lease with the Ontario Highlands Tourist Association. Five-year uh, arrangement that was negotiated uh, and going through to 2020. Resolution number DPCC 1608, moved by chair, signed by committee, the county council, adopt a bylaw to enter into a lease with Ontario Highlands Tourist Organization, RTO number 11, for our office space at 9 International Drive. Uh, in Pembroke, Ontario. Land division, um, uh, there's uh, some cleaning up of that particular situation which hasn't been uh, cleaned up since 2001. Uh, you see there the, the various areas that uh, are being moved and uh, updated to accommodate the that situation. Resolution number DPCC 160109, moved by chair, second by county council, or pardon me, and that county council adopt a bylaw to delegate to the land division committee and to appoint officers part of the authority with respect to the granting of consents. Under item number 15, tariff fees and bylaws, uh, this has not been done uh, an uh, to uh, in the last two or three years, something of that nature. And you see some of the, uh, the recommendations that have come forward, just, uh, just so that you'll know these have these increases have been included as part of the overall budget of our 2016. And while some of them may perhaps look uh, a little bit high in terms of some of the charges and increases that you see there, when you take a look at the actual numbers that, uh, that affects uh, the, uh, the various uh, categories that are there, um, uh, you'll find, for example, let's take the recirculation fee in the last year that was four. That, uh, that we're actually recirculating the substantial cost to some of these, and we're certainly not in a full cost recovery on any of these fees going forward. And I'm sure there will there'll probably be some discussion on this going forward. But nonetheless, uh, the resolution is, is number uh, DPCC 160110, moved by chair, that uh, and signed by committee. The county council adopts a new tariff and fees bylaw for applications made in respect of planning matters and further the tariff and fees bylaw for the fee review. 2017. Uh, what I neglected to, to, to mention there is that the consultation and preliminary inquiries, pre-consultation, and there's some close to 400 of those that are happened by the planning department are free. There's no charge to any anyone that comes to the counter for any of that, that service. <coughs> the County of Brentford Official Plan Amendment Number Seven and, and the detention of uh, Brunel Lindoff and Raglan. The, the, the process there that they've, they've gone through, including public meetings uh, held on November the 4th, I believe, that the municipality itself is in favor of this particular uh, amendment. And as such, you see DP uh, CC 1601-11, moved by chair, second by committee, the county council pass a bylaw to adopt amendment number 27 to the official plan of the county of Renfrew, all of which is respectfully committed by myself as chair, Committee members, Doncaster, Emon, Gibson, McKay, and Miller, and Peck. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from Member Temple on item number one. Uh, you can see that uh, in the priority to the Ontario Awards Caucus, it was, uh, it was noted uh, that Frankie was brought forward by this chamber to the Awards Caucus, and they agreed with uh, they agreed with our concerns, and uh, it's. And we're thankful that uh, Emil has also recognized the significance of of this policy. And uh, well, budget initiative, it was discussed in the budget, it, it's a strange place for that to be. But anyway, uh, so we'll keep an eye on it and keep making presentations on it. Item number two, item three, uh, take your advice, uh, Chair Sweet, and, well, I'm sorry, um, the CAO and Mr. Uh, Tomorrow we'll have heard you and we'll schedule something to make sure we have a presence uh, in Godridge uh, on a basis. Councillor Wisniewski, 
Thank you. I attend this uh, conference, so if you need me to take something or like me to do something, I'm uh, I'm going on behalf of Kilda Hegarty Richards, but uh, I can do whatever it is that uh, to help along the way to see we can maybe make that happen. Anyways, I offer that to the committee and, and to Paul. Okay. Thank you. Good to know. Thank you. Number four. Item five. Item six. Item seven. I drive in most mornings to have a look at that and uh, drive on Saturdays when nobody's around to have a, a longer look. So congratulations to the property division. It's moving along quite nicely. And it seems to be square, so I can't accomplish that. <laughs> Item number eight. <laughs> yeah. Item nine. I put siding on it all on a garden chest to make it look square and fill it at the top two inches. Which is nice. Item ten. Item eleven. Item twelve. Item thirteen. Item fourteen. Item 15, item 16, report of the whole. Mover, please. So moved, Mr. Warren. You've heard the motion and discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you, Council. <coughs> and with that, we'll ask. Chair Wisniewski Moore to present the Health Committee report, please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Members of County Council, we, your Health Committee, wish to report and recommend as follows. Information item number one is the resident population. Number two is the fifth annual food and toy drive. Congratulations to the service uh, for a wonderful fundraiser. Number three is the uh, emergency services remote access and treatment team four, the RAT team. Number four is the Ontario Health Links. Uh, number five is the uh, update on the fire com uh, communications. Number six is the Auditor General's report. Number seven, proposed changes to the health care. Uh, number eight, AMO, the Ontario's consultation on primary home and community health care. Number nine is the short stay respite care bed application. Number 10 is a public health unit inspection on the lodge. Uh, number 11 is the Pembroke Regional Hospital the Fiscal Advisory Committee. Congratulations to Mrs. Uh, she for Shelley, uh, for you being asked to join that group. Number 12, um, the events. Again, um, wonderful news, uh, wonderful the foundation, uh, the money that they're able to uh, raise. So I, I send my thanks to the foundation. Number 13 is the Workplace Safety and Prevention Service. Resolutions 14, Vehicle Disposal Paramedic Services. Resolution number HCC160102, moved by the Chair, seconded by Committee, that County Council approve the sale of one surplus decommissioned paramedic service vehicle, vehicle number 4290-12, to Priority Patient Transfer Services for $5,000 which is an exception to policy GA02 disposal of assets, all of which is respectfully submitted by myself as chair, committee members Doncaster, Eamon, Kingsbury, Love, Robinson, and staff. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from members of council on item number one, two, and again, and again to just comment on this. Uh, this, was, this has been a great initiative over the years. I, I certainly enjoy uh, being uh, paramedics outside the door of Walmart on that Saturday. Uh, they and their family and supporters are very enthusiastic about it and, and quite sincere in their, in their wish to help uh, others around Christmas. So congratulations to the service. I hope that you know and take our words back to, the, to your staff. Item number three. Item four. Item five. Councilor Brown, please. Uh, as far as fire communications, we've been advised that uh, effective August 30th of this year, the Ministry of Natural Resources is asking us to remove our repeater equipment from what we refer to as the Buff Mountain location. 
which would effectively leave us without uh, communications from our ambulance, or sorry, not ambulance, but um, fire services. I have advised uh, Councilor Moore, uh, Chief Nolan, that, that we are seeking alternatives. The information has been forwarded to the consultant. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Vitesky, more please. Yes, uh, thank you to uh, Councillor Brents. I, I appreciated sending me the info that I'd asked for. And uh, so Mike and I will have a chat. And again, thank you for providing me with that info. Item number six. Item seven. Item eight. Item nine. Item 10, item 11, item 12. We are certainly blessed for, uh, with the efforts by our volunteers at uh, Miramichi Lodge and then also at, at Home Commander. Uh, frankly, they, they're both great facilities, but the, uh, the efforts of the found, both foundations allow it to, to present a much homier appearance and that feel for our residents and for our visitors and it certainly reassures our families that you know their their loved ones aren't entering an institution more they're entering a, a home at a phase in their life so thank you to the volunteers for that in both uh, in both facilities item number 13 item number 14 the report as a whole and uh, move it, please i so move mr warden you for the motion, Council. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried. Thank you, Council. And with that, we will take a break now for lunch. Uh, if you can come back at 12:35, we'll have our photo, and then we'll resume, Council. I'm guessing at about uh, 12 minutes to one, and with the size of the agenda, I'm assuming. We we should be after about a quarter after one to on your life. We don't have a closed session.
Uh, item five is Red for County Housing uh, Corporation. Uh, number six, uh, 41 Vinny Restoration Project. So the restoration is, is now complete at 41 Vinny. And uh, currently, uh, so the Social Service Department is working to finalize the insurance claim with the insurer through the uh, Housing Services Corporation. Item seven uh, is an update on the investment in affordable housing for Ontario 2014, uh, rental housing component, uh, Petaluma Housing Corporation. Uh, in that, it's going to require a, a, a bylaw in the first quarter of this year to pass a facility bylaw, both the upper tier, county rent for the lower tier, town of Petaluma levels for taxation purposes, a lot of the application of a residential tax rate for a multi-residential structure. Item eight, Healthy Kids Community Challenge, uh, Redford County. Uh, on December 3rd, the Child Care Service Division hosted the uh, second Healthy Kids Community Challenge at the Travel Lodge in Pembroke. Uh, worked very well. And the recent chalk challenge held during the month of October uh, has been recognized provincially by the Public Health Association Nutrition Resource Center. Uh, it was very, very successful. Uh, it was a similar stove plan challenge scheduled in February. Uh, all of which is uh, respectfully submitted. Myself, the Chair, John Reinwald, the committee members, uh, Emo, Farr, Gibson, Grunts, McKay, Robinson, and Stein. Thank you. <coughs> comments, <coughs> excuse me, comments, questions, concerns from members of council on item number one. Item two, three, four, five, six, seven. Councillor Dunning, please, item seven. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, <coughs> on page. 247, the second paragraph from the end of uh, Section 7 um, is, is making note of uh, property identification number. I'm presuming that that's written only in the short term, that given the severance, will there not be two distinct uh, numbers assigned at some time in the not too distant future? Uh, Mr. Anderson, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Warden, and uh, Councillor Dunn, you know, uh, that was our assumption originally through legal counsel, however, in consultation with the Land Registry Office, they've indicated that the original pin will stay. If indeed there is a problem from separating out the property, uh, there then will be two pin numbers. It's, it's, it's reversed. Hence, you will note in the reports where we requested the proponent provide us with a new and accurate survey, because it will separate not as two properties, but two <coughs> properties. There's the old property, uh, the, the County of Renfrew provided additional money for an elevator in the middle of the property and then the new property. So we will have three parcels that we're dealing with. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Item number eight. I would encourage, uh, if you have the opportunity, to attend the conference on the natural place basis, uh, which is scheduled for February the 18th at the Travel Lodge. What time? I believe it starts at 9. Oh, sorry, uh, registration is 8.30. Actually, they're 8.45. And it lasts until 4. Anything further on the report? A motion, please. Thank you. You've heard the motion and the report. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you. Councillor Love, the striking committee, please. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Members of County Council, we, your striking committee, wish to recommend as follows. Under bylaws number one, the health committee, as you will recall at our inaugural meeting last month, there was a, a slight, uh, well, was a, I guess it was a cut paste error in our, in our uh, committee. So uh, as a result, we had a resolution that Councillor Gunning would be removed from the health committee and Councillor Robinson would be added to the health committee. Uh, number two, striking committee. Councillor McKay has requested that she be removed from the striking committee. So our committee is recommending this change to the, to the, to the striking committee be approved. Sorry. 
So we have resolution number ST-CC-16-01-02. Moved by chair, seconded by committee, that Councillor Dunning be removed from the health committee and that Councillor Robinson be added to the health committee. Further, that Councillor McKay be removed from the striking committee. And further, that a revised bylaw to appoint the county committees for the ensuing year or until their successors are appointed be passed at this session of county council. All of which is respectfully submitted by myself as chair and committee members Don Kester, Emil, Murphy, Reinwald, and Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns for members of council on item number one. And again, my apologies to Councillor Robinson. I know she's not here. But I have to apologize again to her when I see her. Item number two. Report as a whole. Mover, please. So moved. Thank you. You've heard the report and discussion. You've heard the report and the motion. I'm sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried. Thank you, Council. We'll move to bylaws. Councillor Dzneski, work, please. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Moved by myself, seconded by Tom Peckett, that the bylaws listed on item 11 and attached hereto as Schedule A on the County Council agenda dated January 27, 2016, be deemed read three times and passed. You've heard the motion, Council. Discussion? I haven't repeated this in a long time, but if there is a bylaw that is in the list at some point that you wish to be removed on the vote separately, we can do that. Uh, and my apologies for not repeating that probably since August. I'll try to do that on a regular basis. Councillor Gibson. Uh, thank you, Warden. I haven't changed my mind with respect to the A bylaw 4 16, so could you remove that, please? Do I can vote against it? Thank you. So that is number, that's K in the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm perfect. Okay. So with that, we have a, a motion to amend this motion, removing, oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, uh, what we'll do is, is uh, the motion has been changed to to accept the report with the exception of item A, which will be voted on separately. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried, thank you. And now uh, a motion from Councillor Desmet Ewer, seconded by Councillor Murphy, to vote on item 11A. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? One. It's carried. Thank you, Council. Number 12, notice of motions. Members' written motions. New business and Councillor Sweet. Yeah, just by a uh, quick update uh, for uh, members of County Council with regards to Emil and where Emil was in 2016 and some of the challenges and some of the issues that we'll be dealing with uh, going forward and it's nice to be able to welcome the warden to the Emil board uh, on, uh, on Friday. Unfortunately I won't be there but uh, I understand you're, you're going down but I'll talk about it tomorrow when I'm on uh, the, the, the executive but anyway, just to give you a flavor I think first of all let me just start by telling you just what the composition is of able and as far as their members are concerned. This might be of some interest to you. Uh, <clears throat> so municipalities under a thousand, there is 80. Uh, municipalities from a thousand to 900, or 9,999, there's 191. Uh, from 10,000 to 24, 25,000, there is 80. 25 to 49, there's 28. 58 to 100, there's 31 and 80. And over 100,000, there is 34. When you do the numbers there, 80% uh, of the membership of AMO is below 25,000. Uh, and I make them abundantly clear, uh, aware of that every time I sit down. So we're, we're there advocating for 80% of, uh, of the municipalities. You can understand it doesn't represent 80% of the population, but nonetheless it represents 80% of those who are uh, represented by AMO. 
out of a population of 444 municipalities. So going forward in 2016, it's going to be a very, very busy year. Uh, in particular, we're dealing with what's next month in Ontario. This is a very large body of work, and a, a draft will be presented uh, tomorrow to, uh, to us. And going forward, uh, working with the province of Ontario to try and find some sustainable, uh, re predictable, reliable funding initiative uh, for all municipalities. This is going to be a huge challenge. Uh, the infrastructure deficit alone is some $7.5 billion, and uh, as we all know, the province of Ontario is having a hard time uh, balancing the books. So trying to find $7.5 billion at the provincial level will, will require quite a bit of work and flexibility coming on both sides, up to including partnerships with, uh, with all of the municipalities, the province of Ontario, and of course the federal government. How we're going to arrive at that, I have no idea. But we're looking at a large number of <coughs> opportunities and options that could be made available to us going forward. They want to have this in place, uh, a draft and possibly a recommendation to the main AMO board by the middle of February. We started this in, in November, and just to give you a sense of what this looks like, it's very similar to the fiscal, muni uh, the provincial municipal fiscal re uh, review that was done in 2008 in which $1.8 billion was uploaded back to, to the province. Uh, it will require, I'm sure, a lot of uh, uh, nurturing uh, to get to where we need to be. And it could very well mean that uh, we as uh, municipalities will have to be uh, obviously part of it. And certainly we will, from our point of view, able, will not be 100% uh, uh, in place. That will require the, the province and the federal government to be a part of that. They're all, we're all part of this so-called problem, so we're, it's fair to say that we're all part of the, the same solution. Sixty-odd percent, sixty-five percent or thereabouts of all infrastructure in the province of Ontario is owned by municipalities. And when you think about it, uh, you can see where that sixty percent comes in. Roads, bridges, sewer, water, recreation, libraries, to name but a few. Uh, we are getting uh, about eight or nine or ten percent of the actual tax revenue that is collected. Uh, to look after 60 odd percent of the the the, uh, <coughs> the uh, infrastructure, bit of a disconnect there, uh, as you can appreciate. So it's going to be a lot of hard lifting to, to get to where I think we have to be in order to to rely on uh, sustainable funding. I would rather have sustainable funding, and I've advocated for that, rather than this lottery system that we all go through. Uh, uh, and, uh, you're kicked out. Uh, because you're too much in reserves, or too much, uh, uh, too much, uh, not enough debt, or taxes <coughs> are too low, or people in your community make too much money, that, we got to get rid of that. That that just does not uh, sit well with anyone. Uh, and in fact, you're getting punished really for doing what uh, you're supposed to do and run a, an efficient municipality. So big body of work coming forward on that one, and I spent a little bit of time on that for that reason because uh, staff will be working hard to get to to the process that, that hopefully will meet uh, the, uh, the needs of, as I said, 80% of our municipalities. Waste Diversion Act is, uh, is, is something we're considering and we've made substantial gains with that up to the, uh, the, the manufacturing paying their fair share or for Blue Box, for example. Uh, there will be large funds coming out to those who have uh, landfill sites and waste diversion initiatives. Climate change, uh, this cap and trade thing, uh, uh, Minister Murray is very, very big on this and very, and so is the province of Ontario, the province of Quebec, moving forward to this cap and trade situation on climate change. And again, we're going to be part of that, uh, <coughs> that discussion. Another big one that I know it's, a, it's a, an issue around the table here, these services and standards for all municipalities. Uh, we have an opportunity to sit down with the minister uh, during the uh, the uh, of roads. Uh, we'll have him for about an hour or 15 minutes. So if there are issues, um, uh, I would like to hear about them so that I can take those to the to the to the minister and, and, and talk about them at large. I know Bob talked to me about it. The one issue I'll, I'll check that out for him. interest arbitration, and we've talked at length with that one. Um, uh, and this is a this is a. <laughs> quite, a, quite a, a, an issue with it. 
housing and then, and then federal infrastructure uh, programs, uh, there has to be there has to be a buy-in by the federal government. We cannot do this all on our own. And in fact, I've suggested that the housing should not be on the backs of the property tax. It should be on the income tax, similar to the social services that we're uploading. Um, it's, it's a disgrace in my view that it's still where it is and that's on the property tax. We can't handle that. Uh, and that's not where it should be. Infrastructure, of course, uh, is a major one. I talked about seven and a half billion dollar uh, shortfall just in the province of Ontario. Uh, in fact, I think we've we've done some uh, some work where I think we have to increase taxes eight percent year over year for the next ten years and still not be out of the hole. That's the magnitude of uh, of where we are today. Energy issues, and uh, as I indicated, the board has. Uh, in, uh, have, has that as part of their strategic goals uh, going forward in 2016 and certainly is for AMO. Health transformation is moving forward and we've seen a little bit about that uh, as far as limbs are concerned and CCAC's health, uh, health uh, unit funding, etc. <coughs> Policy reviews, uh, they're certainly working on the election issues, uh, municipal act, uh, planning and development charges uh, and aggregates. That's another big one, the aggregates. Uh, in particular, aggregates are coming out of our respective municipalities in huge, huge uh, amounts. And uh, I have to tell you, they're destroying our roads, uh, and at the end of the day, they end up somewhere else. And yet, your local municipality is asked to pay for that. <coughs> A similar type situation is, for example, on the 401 when they detour vehicles because of an accident. It was on the municipal roads. And you can imagine if the 401 is closed for 16 hours, just how many trucks will hit a rolling hill design to, to accommodate that type of thing. Same situation with aggregates. Uh, LES and, uh, and communication with LES, I don't know if any of you uh, locally have taken advantage of the LES, LES program for uh, street lights, for example. The LED program, uh, I know we have. Uh, the town of Perawala will, will say, just to, to give you an idea, $90,000 in hydro costs every year, changing over. It's a four and a half year return on the investment, uh, plus about eight to ten thousand dollars a year in our case for uh, for maintenance because of the length of the last. So, uh, if you're having to uh, utilize that, I would suggest that you take a look at it because it's a, a very valid program and one that LES uh, can help fund with uh, with it as well. Uh, audio video, audio video conferencing is a big thing today and. Uh, tomorrow I'll be on that rather than drive all the way to Toronto and or fly or whatever, <coughs> reducing costs on that. And it is available for any municipality that's a member of AMO should be required. Uh, they are moving forward to try and bring Toronto and Sarnia back into the fold as far as AMO is concerned. Toronto was uh, moved out of that in 2004 or 2005 and they created the Toronto Act uh, which separates us. And to me, it's in incredible that the largest city in, Tr in, in Canada is not part of the Association of Municipalities. Sarnia is, uh, Sarnia is just not there at this point of time. And last but certainly not least, I talked a little bit about it, uh, the Ontario Municipal Partnership, which is currently the single uh, funding envelope, the uh, unconditional funding envelope that we have uh, as municipalities. And where it's going in 2017, we don't know. Uh, but certainly it, uh, we cannot, Ill, we, we can ill afford to lose anything as far as that funding envelope is concerned. We all rely on it, uh, uh, but it has been down year over year. Uh, I think in our community, we've lost $160,000 last year to this year. Where it's going in 2017, if I read the criteria today, and they extended that forward, we lose $640,000. We can ill afford to do that. Uh, going forward, so a lot of work ahead of uh, Peter when the uh, the warden when he when he gets there. Uh, so that just gives you a bit of a flavor of what we're we're trying to do for our municipalities. Thank you. Thank you. I can inform you I have been doing some a substantial amount of reading because they handed me a package. Of, I think about three hundred pages the other day. So I've been working my way through. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. To that end. Um, I was fortunate to be elected uh, as chair of the Warden's Caucus, and, and I can say to you that it's the direct result of the ex excellent work that was was completed long before I became the Warden, and with uh, 
Warden Sweet and Warden Wisniewski and Warden, Warden Rockwell. Uh, they did an excellent job of representing us and presenting our issues uh, coherently and consistently, which is, as you know, a, a major a major part of the recipe when you're trying to convince others that what you're presenting is is uh, is first valid and, and, and necessary to improve your community. So they have done excellent work in, in doing that over the years. And uh, of course, the support of staff here uh, through uh, Mr. Hutton and Rose and Mr. Kutchke and Paul Morrill. I'm calling all of them on a regular basis for information. So uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to have had that that uh, support the, the three previous wardens and now staff and, and as well our Lenke in the past and uh, of course your, uh, your encouragement over the last few years as well as the information you provided which has allowed me to speak with some authority for our issues and other issues at the Wardens Caucus and then through the Wardens Caucus at the uh, England Good Room. So thank you very much for that and I certainly appreciate your support and your, and your patience on understanding sometimes and so thank you very much for that. And having said that, any other new business? With that, uh, could we have a confirmed rebuttal, please? Thank you, Mr. Warden. Moved by myself, seconded by John Reinwald, that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the County of Brentford at the meeting held on January 27, 2016, be now numbered, deemed, read three times and passed. Bylaw number 1716. Thank you. Motion Council, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried. Thank you, Council. <coughs> with that, a motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Murphy, second Councillor Love. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>